Hello students, welcome to SR Concepts and in this video I am going to discuss fertilization that is fusion of male and female gametes. Dear students, if we talk about in human beings, at the time of fertilization, the male releases sperms in the part known as vagina and after that the sperms start moving towards the uterus, they enter into the uterus. At that time, suppose one egg has been released from the ovary and reached the ov duct. So the sperms will continue their journey through the uterus into the ov duct and finally they reach the egg and fuse with the egg to complete the process of fertilization. You can see here that during this process, a large number of sperms may reach the egg. Here you can see the whitish structures, these are the sperms and this red colored structure is the egg. You will see that however a large number of sperms has reached the egg but only one sperm will fuse with the egg and this fusion of sperm with the egg is called fertilization and after the fertilization the egg will be called zygote. This means, there is a question that why children have features of both the parents. You will see you will uh, look at your sisters, brothers, that you will see that there are certain features from your mother and certain features from your uh, father, right? So what is the cause of this? The cause of this is that, that during the process of fertilization, the cells from male parent, that is the father, the cells from male parent known as sperm fuse with the cell from female parent that is the ovum. During this fusion, the nucleus of the sperm and the nucleus of the egg itself fuse together to make the nucleus of the zygote. So we can say that the nucleus of the zygote contains genes from both the mother and father. And this is why when the zygote will divide and uh, undergo cell division and develop into the embryo and the develop and the embryo then develop into the baby so the baby will have the features of both the parents here are certain notes written right you can write the notes in your copy and uh, uh, this question is also written the solution is also written you can note these questions and answers in your copy so dear students in the previous video in the previous video, I have given you one question that you have to find out the names of such animals in which fusion of male and female gametes takes place outside the body. So these animals are actually the frog, the fish and starfish. There are many other examples of such animals. So such kind of fertilization in which fusion of male and female gametes takes place outside the body of the female this is called external fertilization and it takes place in frog in fish and starfish and many more uh, animals if we talk about internal fertilization then internal fertilization is such a fertilization in which the fusion of male and female takes place inside the female body and the examples of such animals in which ex internal fertilization takes place are humans cows, dogs, hens and even in monkey here you can see. So in monkey you will see internal fertilization takes place but in frog external fertilization takes place. Let's talk about external fertilization. Here you can see that there are one male and one female frogs together. During this process the female frog releases a very large number of eggs outside the body. And the male also releases its sperms over them in water bodies actually. So both a large number of eggs and a large number of sperms are released in water. A large number of eggs gets fertilized with the sperms but a large number of both sperms and eggs are wasted also and they are eaten by predators also. So here you will see that many of the eggs will get fertilized and convert into zygote but many of the zygote will not be able to complete their development. Distance, during rainy season you can perform this activity also that you may visit some pond 
or slow flowing stream and look for the clusters of frogs eggs which are floating in the water you may note down the color and size of the eggs but please do this activity with some elders only never visit a pond or a stream alone so need to do this activity only under the supervision of certain elders or with your teacher all right now let's move on to the next slide here you can see that these black dots that which you are seeing right these are the eggs of the female frog right but you can see that the eggs do not have a shell like uh, the hen's egg so you can see that these eggs are little bit more delicate as compared to the eggs of a hen you can see that once the sperms are released in the water they swim randomly in water with the help of its long tail so even the sperms of a frog have a long tail which helps in the movement this means once the sperm come in contact with the egg this results in the process of fertilization now there is a problem in human beings in certain female human beings in certain ladies the ov duct is blocked and because of this the sperms will not be able to pass through the ov duct and reach the egg so in such females fertilization of the egg does not take place and they are not able to give birth to a baby what is the solution of this problem so the solution to this problem is in vitro fertilization the fertilization which we perform artificially in a test tube inside the laboratory what are the steps of this process first of all the doctor collects a freshly freshly released egg from a female that is a mother and sperms from the father here you can see that the egg is being collected from the female right so the eggs are kept the egg is kept in a test tube and the sperms released from the father are collected in another test tube now the sperms are mixed with the egg and uh, we allow the sperms to fuse with the egg in this test tube so in this test tube the fertilization will take place that is the fusion of sperm and the egg after the fertilization you know that the egg will be called the zygote we will provide such a solution such a medium and such a temperature that will help the zygote will help the zygote to undergo cell division and develop into a little ball of cells known as embryo now once the embryo is formed the embryo is injected or are placed inside the uterus inside the uterus this embryo will get attached to the wall of the uterus and will develop for 9 months into a whole baby and the baby will be born just like any other baby so what are the steps first of all again sperms are collected allowed to fuse in a test tube for in vitro fertilization the zygote is allowed to develop into an embryo for a week then embryo is placed in the uterus of the mother and complete development of the baby takes place inside the uterus finally the baby takes birth just like a normal baby the baby is born through such a technique are known as test tube babies however this term is misleading because the babies cannot grow in a test tube so dear students this was the process of in vitro fertilization right uh, in which the fertilization is taking place in laboratory conditions inside a test tube so whenever we perform a natural phenomena in a artificial setup inside a laboratory we add the term in vitro so this is why this is called in vitro fertilization thank you for watching this video in the next video we will discuss about the oviparous and viviparous animals and also we will discuss about the embryonic development please like the video subscribe to the channel and share the video if you really like it thank you